Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. My name is Jess, and today I am doing a review video. Now, before I jump into the meat of this content, I wanted to kind of preface it. Anytime I talk about stuff when it comes to gardening, I, I always want to say like, hey, don't be discouraged, you don't need stuff to garden. If you are a determined gardener, you can garden uh, with very little resources. And I like to share tips and tricks on how to do that, show how to do things resourcefully. But it is true that if you are going to spend your money on something, you might be wondering if it's a good purchase for you to make. Now, I am a chronic review reader. I don't even buy a toothbrush without reading like extensive reviews. I have always been this way. Therefore, I have always been the kind of person that leaves reviews because I value them. I like to watch videos on YouTube. I like to read blog posts. I am going to do multiple internet searches and read all the reviews on Amazon before I buy anything. That's just how I do it. And I have talked before about the Greenstalk planter. I recently put it in my most recommended garden tools video and Greenstalks have made appearances in my videos for years now because I have been growing in them for about three years and I've never done like a dedicated green stalk review video so today that is what I'm doing because green stalk messaged me and said they're having their big sale where the five tier original planter is the lowest price that it ever is uh, with my coupon code ROOTS10, it puts it under $100. And this is the lowest price that they ever go to. And I thought, I'm gonna go ahead and do this review video. I don't have a video to reference when people ask these questions, because I don't think I've ever answered them all in the same place. It's really windy out here, unfortunately, so hopefully I'm able to get this video done well. So I got my first green stock three years ago, and I started using this thinking, oh, well, this might be a good tool for viewers who are limited in space. This is my first green stalk. It's three years old, still looking pretty good if I do say so myself. And I have strawberries in it. And they are absolutely delightful. My strawberries in the ground are doing awesome, but occasionally you pull them away and they are half eaten by slugs. And the ones in the green stalk I don't have that problem with. So this planter, has been replanted multiple times. I've amended the soil in it. Um, at one point I did replace the soil in it. And right now I've had these strawberries in them. Some of these plants are newer. Some of them um, have been in here for a couple years. I really wanted to show you guys this one before we head back over to the greenhouse. Just because I wanted you to see how good this looks after multiple seasons of use. Now this one is the five tier original. Uh, that has the five deeper tiers and it's on the spinner So this is just the thing that spins it around and I've got it set up on some pavers there so I can move it easily So then I have these two green five tier originals Which I've had these for two years now and they are on the rollers so I can move them around here on my patio easily on my little deck and then here i have the seven tier leaf planter this is the first year for this planter um, i've harvested a lot of salad out of this already and uh, things are still looking really good and this is my first year to have this one this variety was just released this year so i want to show you the difference here between the original and the leaf and then i'm going to show you how the green stalk works the original has deeper pocket and so the leaf is designed to plant things that don't need quite as extensive of a root system so here i've got all of these leafy greens in here uh, some of these we're going to start struggling when it gets hot outside anyway and um i just filled this up it's been a couple of months ago now as you can see it's fully filled out and these you can still grow the leafy things but you can also grow plants that need a more developed root system i kind of thought that i might plant these for this video but it is starting to drizzle a little bit uh, hopefully we can get this done all right so how the green stalk works is you have this reservoir in top where you put the water and the water flows down through this middle section and underneath each section of the tower there is another reservoir and so the water fills up to this reservoir until it gets to a certain height and then it spills over 
and goes down to the next level and then it spills over and goes down to the next level and it spills over and it goes down to the next level. So you don't have issues with the soil in the lower levels or in individual pockets drying out. So I took this tier off to show you guys. The way these reservoirs work is they each have a little hole where the water drips out and waters that individual pocket. And on the top reservoir, you have a measuring system. So if you have a three-tier green stock, you fill it to here. A four-tier, you, you fill it to here. And a five-tier, you fill it to here. So a lot of people complain with different tiered planters that they water unevenly. But because of the watering system in the green stock, what I usually do is I'll have a five-gallon bucket. or And I will put the water in there. I'll spray it spray it into there with a hose or I'll just leave the bucket out on the front porch of my greenhouse to catch rainwater because I do like to water my plants with rainwater when it's possible. Of course these get rained on also but whenever I need to water them I just pour that water in the top and fill it up to this fill line and it uh, distributes down evenly into each one of those pockets in the containers. Now what I've experienced of the Greenstock company is that they are incredibly precious people. It's a family owned business. These are made in the United States and not Tennessee out of food grade plastic. I appreciate the fact that the quality is consistent. I like I said I got my first green stock in 2018. I got my next two in 2019 and then I got my most recent one in 2021. They're all fantastic quality, consistent quality across the board. I have now tried with the wheels, with the turner, and without. Um, I like the functionality of them. And I've grown a lot of things in them. Like I've had the strawberries in there. I've grown green beans and herbs. I've grown leafy things. Um, I've grown peppers in them. The most impressive use of a green stalk I've personally seen, like in person, is that I gave my mom one for Mother's Day last year. And I will put some clips that I took of my mom's green stalk on my phone when I went to her house once last year. It's really neat to see what you can do in a container. So she's got one tower here. She's got tomatoes growing here. There's one ripening. She's got a little okra plant in here, which is setting its first blossoms. Here's a bunch of mint that's cascading out she's got a melon and it's coming out here there's another there's a cucumber over here that's cascading out big coleus looking beautiful I'm not even sure what this is um, dill is that dill it smells like dill um, and then more tomatoes more herbs I just think it's so fascinating and encouraging and she just added some little supports here to support all of these plants which is growing in this one single container is that really really cool how much you can grow when you just try so I want to talk to you about using the green stalk and getting like the best use out of it so uh, for people who've never done any container gardening before this is container gardening and one of the things that you really need to do to make the most out of any container and this does apply with the green stalk is you need to put good soil in it um, I personally like to use back toe potting soil Fox Farm makes a good potting soil uh, like in a good organic potting soil that doesn't have a ton of debris in it uh, usually when you buy a bag of soil like that is going to have some nutrients already some sort of fertilizer already in that soil but the thing with the container is is that the plants in that container are going to use up the nutrients in that soil and there aren't like earthworms in that like you would have in the ground there aren't things that are breaking down and adding back to that soil like you might have in a in ground garden and so you're going to have to fertilize those plants now I keep this right here on the inside of my greenhouse near my green stalks and when I just mix up that water to pour in the top I will just do like a couple of teaspoons maybe like once a week in the water in the green stock to make sure that I'm feeding that. This is a Fox Farm soil and fertilizer. I also have a uh, Neptune's Harvest one that is good. Just some sort of gentle fertilizer. You don't want to go crazy. You don't want to overdo it. Over fertilizing your plants is not a good thing. But if you're trying to grow in containers like this, you do need to add some nutrients on a slow regular application in order to keep those plants growing in 
in those containers. And when it comes to growing in the green stalks, you can grow many things in these planters as long as you are consistently feeding and watering them and providing support for the plants. And I don't have great examples right now because I'm just getting these planted for the season. I am planning on moving these with us when we move the benefit of these is is that you can take the tiers apart and i should be able to move them even though it might take uh you know some effort to make sure my plants go don't get damaged but i love the fact that even if you only have a small space you can grow a significant amount of food one year i did fill both of these planters up with flowers and they just got really big and full of flowers and i just did that because they were beautiful right here in the front of the greenhouse but i really do think that the green stalk shines when you're growing food in it for instance with this leaf planter I and mean, you can kind of see how harvested some of these things are around the edges where there's like multiple leaves missing i can come down here and just picking a small section, I can, I can take a whole huge bowl of salad up to my family. And this is just a tiny area of space, just a, a couple of square feet here. And I've got this much food growing. Now, obviously, I'm not wanting for space. And ultimately, I have started growing in the green stalks because I thought, well, this will be a great tool for people who don't have a lot of space. I fell in love with the aesthetic of them and the fact that they are striking, they're beautiful. They really are just like really neat to behold. There are the benefits of like having the strawberries up away from the slugs, having all of these salad greens up out of the soil. Even when it rains, these heads of lettuce are not having a bunch of splashback of soil on them because they're sticking out like this and the soil is primarily covered. So while they do get watered from the rain, they're not getting dirtied from the rain. This lettuce is relatively clean and that's a really great benefit whenever you're growing your food at home because real food really does come dirty. And whenever you can find a way like this to maybe make it a little less dirty, it is a plus. And I love any sort of product that makes gardening accessible for people, especially whenever they are in their classroom. I've said this many times in reference to the green stalk and in reference to anything that would aid you to grow some food where you are. I did a video a while back about growing salad greens in a soil bag and covering it with a tub and growing in a kiddie pool and these different things that I've showed you about how how to grow something even though you might not be able to grow everything that you want to grow. That is the number one thing that I can say for the green stalk, even with all the other reasons why I still use them whenever I have all this other garden space, but it really is such a great solution if you are in a place that you cannot put garden beds in. Perhaps you don't have the skill to build them. You don't have the way to get the soil or the materials to your house. Maybe you're in a rental and you're not able to put in a garden for that reason, or you're in an apartment or a duplex and you don't even have a yard. You probably have a couple of square feet of porch or patio space where you could put something like this up. And to me, I will keep sharing this product because of how many people tell me I'm desperately yearning to get my hands in the soil, but I can't because of X, Y, Z. I'm like, yeah, but hold on, have you looked at this solution? So you can grow most things in these. I would say, uh, obviously, things like big vining watermelons and big vining squash, though I would be curious to try. Obviously, that's going to expand the footprint because even with support, there's no way you're gonna keep that up in this couple of foot footprint. You can grow tomatoes. They make supports that you can clip onto the outside of them if you want to grow big things like tomatoes and give them support. Um, I have grown tomatoes in them before, but I just put a stake down in them. And when my mom did tomatoes in her, she did the same thing. She just kind of made a support herself. This year, I'm going to try to push the limits on one of mine and put some different things in there stay really regimented in the feeding schedule and see just how much i can do and i will tell you that we are moving to a blank homestead and i have already made a plan uh, i told maya whenever we're working out our temporary housing which we've been working on this week i'm like okay but i'm gonna need some sort of flat area here in front of our house because i'm gonna put up just a couple of raised garden beds and my green stalks and I might get a couple more green stalks and that is like my garden plan for the winter because with I'll still have my strawberries in that green stalk but with having these three and maybe a couple of more I can grow enough of the kale and the veggies and the winter things that I grow over winter I can grow enough of those in those 
handful of green stalks for my family over the winter. The green stalk is my garden plan for this winter when I'm in the in-between. That's how much I really do believe what I'm telling you guys and saying like, hey, this is a great product for this situation. Uh, it's the product I'm going to use in that situation when I don't have the big garden. That's what I'm leaning on. So if you do decide to purchase a green stalk, um, I really like starting with the five-tier original planter. I also really, really like the leaf for that purposes. I do feel like you probably have a little more versatility with the five tier. And right now we are going into, you know, spring and summer. And so more of the things that you're going to be trying to grow in that season, maybe, you know, putting in like cucumber plants and peppers or tomatoes, that sort of stuff, you're probably going to want those deeper tiers. So the the Mother's Day sale is well timed. Um, if you were going to be getting a green stalk for the first time going into the cooler season, I might spring for a leaf at that point because you might be growing those leafy vegetables. I planted those out here. They froze multiple times and they were completely fine. I, I planted those before our last frost day because they're all frost hardy. So the taller original green stalks of five tier, they take about a cubic foot of soil per tier to feel. So if you are going to be like going and purchasing soil form, if you've never done the math on figuring out cubic feet and all of that, it's about 350 pound bags is what you're going to uh, use filling that up. Uh, most of mine, I have just put the soil in and then some of it ends up kind of compacting down and washing down. I might add some more compost to it, add some worm castings to it before I replant it. And then of course I do that slow feed fertilization on those to make sure that my containers are supported. They come in multiple colors. If you don't want one that's as tall as this, you can get lower ones. They sell them in three tier and four tier, which is also great for kids if you're wanting to give your kids a garden space. And just because I've been working with this company for a long time and I've been sharing this product for a long time, I've gotten a lot of feedback from you guys. Um, I had a, a woman who worked with individuals who were in wheelchairs that wanted to garden and they used green stalks for this program and they actually have a tool that you can get on Amazon to help hold a hose up and essentially the tool was aiding people who were in wheelchairs to be able to garden in the green stalks and water the top of the green stalk with a hose um, which I thought was so, so cool. So this might be a really good option for somebody who might not have the capacity to do gardening in a different sense, but it would give the ability to garden to a person, which is such a wonderful gift. One question I get a lot about the green stalks is, well, if they water evenly. That's probably one of the, the most asked questions I get, and the answer is yes. Uh, the second question that I get a lot is, do you ever deal with them being turned over in high winds? Now I've been using these in central Arkansas for the last three years. Um, I am on kind of higher elevation here at this property. We're on a ridgeline property and we have had uh, like tornado level storms come through here. We had uh, the hurricane come through from the Gulf last uh, summer and it, the, the winds were pretty intense, like knocked a tree over in our woods whenever they came through and the green stalks did not turn over. Now I can't speak to like being in prairie wind places, but from what I have experienced, I think if you have them on a level surface, you're probably fine. They're really like well centered and well weighted. But uh, if you were really concerned, like I have these couple up next to my greenhouse, like if you were able to put them in a place where they got plenty of sun but still had some measure of windbreak, I think they're sturdy enough that you don't have to worry about that. People ask me if they're movable once they are put together. I have taken mine apart and moved them with plants in them. Uh, usually if I'm going to put it back together, I will have somebody help me. I'll have Jeremiah or Ben Turner or one of my boys help, help put it back together just to make sure you've got somebody to move the plants out of the way while you lower the next level back on. But it can be done. I just think it's probably a two person job if you want to eliminate the risk of decapitating your plants. Um, another question that comes up sometimes is how do they do in the heat? Now I do have my black green stalk out in my garden and it gets hot here. Um, it is it is common for it to be 100 Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius in the summer here and I've never had any issues with that like frying my plants or anything. Uh, I do make sure that I'm keeping it watered and I probably do have to water it a little bit more frequently in the height of summer but not any more than like the rest of my containers. That's just 
container gardening, you're gonna have to do that when it's hot. Overall, I only have good things to say about the green stock. I know that they are an investment. This is not just like a cheap product that you're gonna buy, uh, like it's no big deal. I mean, spending $100 on something is a lot of money. But the fact that I can point at the one that I have grown now in multiple, multiple seasons and that it looks just as good as the one that I just got, I think that's a great testament that it's money well spent. It's gonna hold up and you're gonna be able to get a lot of use out of it. And just like you can see in my leaf planter here, I'm regularly picking salads out of this. It is helping me save money on the grocery bill it's giving me joy it's making gardening easier it's helping me pick non sluggy strawberries and nice clean salad greens and like in the case of my mom's green stock where she does primarily container garden because that is the most accessible for her it's helping her grow food uh, in a situation where she is not in a place where she can have a big in-ground garden or raised bed garden so i will put a link down below again the coupon code roots 10 does get you a discount and the sale that is currently going the mother's day sale it starts today the day that this video is published and it goes until may 10th so i could keep going on and on about it i think i covered the top topics that I wanted to cover specifically about fertilizing so that you have the best success because if you never had any experience with container gardening you might try something like this and think it oh well that didn't work for me and think that somehow that was the product's fault um, or that you maybe it was your fault where you're thinking oh I'm a bad gardener no it's just like the simple thing of figuring out well what do plants need and then giving it to them and in the case of any sort of container gardening the thing that you're gonna have to stay on top of and giving the plants what they need is you're gonna have to feed them because they only have the nutrients that are contained in the container <laughs> So I do hope that this helps you, review lovers. Uh, I hope that if you're on the fence that this might have answered some of the questions that you had uh, as far as the green stalk goes. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I bless you. Until next time.